Good afternoon, my fellow engineers. Today we're going to be looking at Solid Edge, and this is going to be the first of five videos in the Solid Edge basic pack here at the Tuition Project. Um, and we're just going to be getting used to uh, what Solid Edge does and what it can do. So, uh, this, as I said, this is the first of the first five videos in the basics pack, and um, in this video we're not actually going to be making any products, uh, assemblies, parts, or um, uh, drafts, or anything of the like. We're just going to be getting used to the workspace. So if you have used Solid Edge before, and you know what it is, and you're confident that you can move on, uh, skip this video by all means, go onto your um, onto the more the the next few videos, or look at the intermediate or advanced pack. But um, this basics pack, this very first video, is just going to be getting used to the workspace. So um, if you're if you've never used Solid Edge before and you don't even know you know what it is, um, welcome. This is this is Solid Edge. You know. um, now this is Solid Edge ST7. Um, it looks a little bit different to ST6, ST5, and ST4, but um, you know you it does the same thing. Um, there's a, the only only difference is there's a couple of more. There's a, a few more features, and uh, obviously the, there is a bit of styling layout. So we'll get onto um, the changes in a little bit and, and all the, the the features in the workspace in a sec. But I'd just like to start by explaining to people that have never heard of Solid Edge or don't really know what it can do. Uh, what is Solid Edge? Well, Solid Edge is a um, it's a computer aided design program. So it allows you on your computer to make um, a simulation or a, a model of a design um, in a three D environment. Which uh, which allows you to you know inspect dimensions to get a general idea of what it's going to look like, and then with those models you can export them to uh, uh, 3D printing machines, 3D printers. Um, you can make draft files, um, which I'll get onto later on what draft files actually are, but you can make uh, draft files uh, for manufacturing, um, and you can make uh, all sorts of these products. You can make products that are really really small from. Uh, millimeters across and span and you can make products that are huge um, you know you can make cars with a couple of thousand or million individual components or you can make buildings or you could make cities or you can make all sorts but um, we're not going to be doing that we're going to start with a table in our next video um, but uh, in this video I said we're not making any parts um, just for everyone to know I'm going to be using millimeters not inches or feet or anything I'm going to be using millimeters and meters because um, uh, I'm I'm a favourite of the metric system, um, so we'll just dive right in and, and explain what we're actually what we're actually looking at. So this is Solid Edge ST7, as I said, and as I said, it does look a little bit different to ST6, ST5, and ST4. Um, with ST6, you'll have your create here as the same. It'll look a bit different. I think draft and world went the other way around, but um, that's the that's the same. But the recent documents here is actually as a list down here. Um, these useful links are actually in this sort of section and then this sort of section is over here again as these sorts of links um, and the community support is, is in this list as well but um, but it, they all do the same thing they're just they've just decided to change the links around um, for some reason but I'm going to be using SD7 which is the latest instalment um, as of the, the current date so we we'll start from the top um, if you if you if you've not used it before at all, um, then quite obviously we've got your your close here, your restore down restore up here, and we've got your minimize here. Um, we've got this is this button here. The application button is kind of like your file button in in Word or anything. You, you've got uh, new, which means you can open new projects. You've got um, open, which means you can open existing projects. My recent documents uh, correspond to the recent documents down here. Um, convert, which we're not going to be using. Print drawings, which is for drafts later on, um, and we can ignore these ones at the bottom as well. Sort of the options will allow you to define some of the um, some of the uh, the options and preferences later on, like changing from metric to imperial and vice versa, um, and changing layouts as well. But we're not going to be looking at that just yet. So. <coughs> we're not going to be opening a, a part at all because we haven't got any parts so far in the tutorial. So. We're going to have a quick look um, what creating parts can do. What what can they do? So um, there's an isometric part, which is uh, a part is literally just um, the a single component. So it could be a board for a shelf. It could be um, it could be a screw. It could be uh, a piece of paper. You know, it could be a window. But it wouldn't be like a car 
panel. It could be a car panel, but it can be like a car door because a car door has lots of little things inside it. It's got the roller, it's got the screw and stuff like that. You wouldn't really design a car as a part because you couldn't take it apart and look at things inside it. So a part is the fundamental level. We'll skip sheet metal for a sec. Assemblies, uh, they assemble parts. So you've got all of these parts, you've got your screws and you've got your boards with have, which have screw holes in them. And then you can you stick it all together, you make relationships in it, and then you can make your much larger uh, assembly. So your car would be in your assembly, or your wardrobe would be in your assembly. Um, but you wouldn't, as I said, you wouldn't make the car in a part, but you'd make parts of the car in part. And then you'd stick them together in assembly. So we'll be looking at assembly later on. Isometric sheet metal um, quite is, is what it sounds, it's a sheet of metal. Um, if you've got a calculator on your desk, or if you've got a chest of drawers with the metal strips on the inside, they will often be made from sheet metals, uh, big sheets of metal that have been cut to the right size and then bent. Um, holes will have been drilled into them, it could have been tapered at sides. Um, so a sheet metal is it's normally based on a big sheet of metal that you bend and cut into shape. You don't have a big block of, say, wood and then carve it, you know, obviously. Um, Isometric weldment or the, is the welding of sheet metals. So it's the equivalent from assembly to part as sheet metal to weldment, um, or rather weldment to sheet metal. The weldment allows you to stick parts of sheet metal together through welds and joins. Isometric draft will allow you to convert your 3D image of your um, assembly or part into your standard um, 2D display, normally in third angle projection. So when you imagine the blueprints to a house, the the house obviously isn't in 3D. You look at the blueprints and they're in 2D, um, and that draft will allow you to make um, your uh, draft files from the assembly, and it's really easy and really useful tool. So we'll be looking at that later on. So we're going to dive in. I said ignore these for a sec. We're going to jump into the um, isometric part because obviously you can't make an assembly without your parts. And as I said earlier on, we're not going to be making anything in this video. We're just going to get a very, very quick overview. So um, when you're in this environment, the first thing I'd want you to do to make sure just that you can follow along and, and see the same pattern is uh, when, it's, when it's over here, and if it says synchronous, right click, and then transition to ordered. We're going to be making all of our parts in ordered from now on. Um, it's a lot easier to work out. And then and now it should look something like this. So um, just a quick overview of the tools. We've got the select tool, which we don't have anything in the workspace except for the axis, but you can select the axis, so that's going to be quite useful. Um, that just allows you to select parts or, or select um, features in your part. And as I said, there aren't any features yet, but we can still select the, um, the base axis. Um, we will be ignoring sketch. We will be looking at sketch later on, but uh, simply put, a sketch is, is what it sounds like. It just allows you to draw a sketch um, like in this quick video here and then you can use that sketch to extrude or cut or you can do lots of cool things with that sketch you can fill them in and make 2D surfaces as well um, extruding is when you, you, you make um, kind of like a, a, um, a basis so if you've got um, if you want to make a solid box you'd make a solid box and extrusion if you wanted to make um, a big, uh, if you wanted to make um, a hollow cylinder, you'd make it in extrude, and then you'd cut out the cylinder on the inside. And then um, an extrusion is you make a, a standard shape, like a square or something, and then you extrude it by length. So you, you don't make complex shapes, you just make um, extruded shapes, like uh, lengthened 2D images. And a cut is very similar to extrusion, it's just obviously in cut form, you make a cut, um, cut out, you make a cut out and then you can uh, lengthen that cut um, a certain distance or the entire distance of an object to make uh, effectively a hole in it of any shape. Um, revolving allows you to revolve an extruded uh, uh, pattern around an axis or a sketch around an axis. Revolved cut is quite similar, it's just a cut revolved. Um, whole, holes are basically circular cuts that go all the way through a part. Um, rounding and chamfering just minimises the edges um, a little bit, as you can see. 
um, and drafting basically allows you to turn uh, effectively like if you have a cube you can make the edges stick out a little bit more at the bottom and you can turn it into a cut off pyramid. Um, we'll be ignoring thin wall um, adding which allows you to do sweeping, uh, log cutting and bodying and we'll be ignoring patterns and modifying for now. Um, we will not be looking at dimensions, uh, we will be looking at dimensions in the next video but we will not be looking at them now. Um, orientating, just getting around the uh, the uh, the workspace. Um, the, there's two that I would I'd like to, to uh, talk to you about. There's pan, which if I click pan, if you if you look at the uh, the axis, if I pan from left to right, as you can see, it drags the uh, the entire workspace to the right. If I drag it from one corner down to the opposite corner, it follows that. So a pan is like sliding a sheet of paper on the table. It will work in the same way. Rotate allows you to rotate around an axis or rotate around um, your position. Now, rotating the rotate tool it takes a bit of getting used to. I'll be honest, um, but you, it's, it's not too difficult once you once you know how it works. And that would be like holding up um, a ball in your hand and um, you know changing which way you look at the ball from 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 a, an orientating section. Um, we're not going to be looking at all of these. We just want you to have a quick look at view. If you're in this sort of section now, and we just want to see the ZX plane, you could obviously rotate it around, which would be a little bit, to get it perfectly, it would be a little bit diff difficult. Or you can use these views here. So you've got a front view, which is the ZX plane, and there's the back view, which is just the other side of the ZX plane. And we've got left views, which is a different orientation, uh, bottom view and top view and so forth. And there's additionally um, different 3D views. So we've got diametric, isometric and trimetric which just allows you to view it um, at a certain angle I think that's a 60 degree angle there and a 60 degree angle there which allows you to um, view your 3D model in a 2D environment anyway that's our quick overview of the uh, of what Solid Edge can do and what it looks like um, in the next video we're going to be making a part we're going to be using the extruding and cut commands to make a part and we'll be looking at dimensioning as well so uh, going to be using that tool, the cut tool, and some of these tools as well. Okay, so I'll see you guys in the next video.